What is going on YouTube? So I wanted to come back today, um, just did some NBA Finals predictions, but um, wanted to give a little bit of background information and what I think is going to happen, what uh, and what's just going on with uh, one of the most confusing players in college football right now, but also one of the biggest signees from the 2019 recruiting class, Brew McCoy. Now, um, for those of you that have followed me for a while or maybe uh, have read elsewhere, seen in the past, I do uh, cover the Longhorns for fan sided blog called Hook and Headlines. So I've been up close and personal with the Brew McCoy situation thus far. Um, now, let's take a jump back for a second to his recruitment originally start um, way back. I won't say way back at the beginning for him coming out of high school, but um, how this whole saga started in the first place. So Brew McCoy was a five-star athlete, um, mainly played wide receiver, but also played a little bit in the front seven for modern day high school. And um, he's from Santa Ana, California. Now, Brew McCoy was originally mainly down to uh, USC and Texas. Um, he made his decision after the uh, early signing period, which was instituted, I believe, two years ago, uh, which definitely overshadowed a lot of the uh, significance around National Signing Day, except for this whole Brew McCoy situation. Now, he originally er, committed to USC back on January 5th. He, uh, in the days following, because uh, you can do this after the early signing period, uh, he then signed his national letter of intent, um, I believe the day after, and then enrolled early soon after that. Uh, so he was ready to be on campus at UN or USC for spring ball um, and then to get an early jump with Clay Hilton and get ready to go for his freshman season. Now, um, the second part to this saga with USC after he had committed and signed um, was all the coaching drama that was going on at the time. So USC had an offensive coordinator opening. Um, also, Clay Helton was very much on the hot seat for most of the 2018 season and definitely is during the offseason heading into 2019. Um, obviously, he was then as well. So USC goes out, makes a splash hire with Kling's, or Kling's, Cliff Kingsbury as the offensive coordinator. He had just got let go from Texas Tech. Texas Tech had hired U or Utah State's Matt Wells. So... The USC coaching staff actually has a big name on its way. Um, a guy that obviously helps wide receivers put up big numbers um, during his time at Texas Tech um, and could institute a very different offense, more with an air raid scheme. Now, Cliff Kingsbury um, obviously had close ties with Brew McCoy once he was able to come over to USC. It was a splash hire. Anytime you bring in a splash hire as an offensive coordinator like that for a wide receiver, it can always bring a ton of interest. So, Fast forward here, maybe about a month after Cliff Kingsbury gets hired, um, he's already searched or seeking out head coaching jobs in the NFL, um, which were confusing at the time as well. But there were some teams looking in that direction, just again, to make a splash higher. Eventually, the Arizona Cardinals end up hiring Cliff Kingsbury as their head coach. All through this saga, um, again, Clay Helton on the hot seat, USC coming off a very disappointing season where they miss bowl eligibility just in general. We have a very young team, a very uncertain quarterback situation if JT Daniels can't improve, um, and just a lot of turmoil in general. Through this, Brew McCoy decides on, what was it, January 24th to decommit from USC. The following day, he commits to Texas. Two days later, he enrolls early there. So within the span of less than a month, um, Brew McCoy has committed, signed, enrolled early at USC, Seeing the offensive coordinator, he uh, looks like what, who he wanted to play for, hired and uh, not necessarily fired, but released, going to the NFL. He then transfers to a new school. Is the weirdest player to put his name in the transfer portal that early on and uh, is then fighting for immediate eligibility at Texas since he did have to transfer. So um, he makes it through spring ball. You know, He has a good spring game. Obviously, a ton of hype building around him. Texas has a loaded recruiting class, a loaded receiving core, uh, big names like Colin Johnson. Although he did switch to running back, they had a five-star wide receiver signing, Jordan Whittington, who had a ton of hype. Um, nonetheless, still a lot of skill position talents, even like Devin Duvernay coming back. Um, Jake Smith, another four-star borderline five-star guy. So um, a lot working there. Uh, Brew McCoy could have been a starter right away if he had got immediate eligibility. 
Um, not really any off the field drama while Brew McCoy was at Texas. So now let's, you know, talk about spring ball, what happened with Brew McCoy during, um, during this whole uh, saga when he was transferring in between. Everything seems fine heading into summer workouts when the rest of the recruiting class and he transfers the Longhorn sign are supposed to arrive. Um, everything's supposed to be settling down. Contrary to that, um, and in the same weird weekend that Art Browles is hired to be a Texas high school football coach, I believe at Mountain Vernon Independence, uh, coming off his whole Baylor scandal, the weekend gets even weirder in the world of Texas college football uh, or college football in the state of Texas. Um, Brew McCoy up in decides that he might want to transfer back from Texas to USC before he even gets the ruling back from the NCAA about his waiver for eligibility. Um, as to his backing for this, it's hard to tell for sure. Um, being closer to his family, maybe USC coaching situation settling down, Clay Helton still being there, uh, getting further away from this whole Cliff Kingsbury saga, um, and just maybe there was something going on in Texas, who knows. Um, there's been a lot of transfer activity coming in and out of the Longhorns and the 40 acres this, this off season. Um, he decided over the weekend, like last weekend that he might want to transfer back to USC. Uh, since then in the last few days, um, there's been reports that Sam Ellinger, uh, the head coach, Tom Herman, have, you know, flew out to California, wide receivers coach Drew Maringer flew out to California to try to put their best retention efforts forward. Um, while he, it seems like Brew McCoy is getting closer and closer to transferring to USC. At this point, it really feels like there's like a 5% chance of the Longhorns hang on to him and about a 95% chance he goes back to USC. Now, it doesn't seem like there's any other landing spots on the table here. Like when he first decommitted from USC, it was, it was like, it felt like like 90 to 95% chance he landed at Texas. It seems like like 5% chance, maybe 10 that he goes back to Texas and like 90%, maybe 95 that he goes to USC. And like, I guess if you could put anything like a 0.5% chance he goes somewhere else, it just wouldn't mix. I mean, this whole thing doesn't make a whole lot of sense in the first place, but um, this whole saga could round out just him getting closer to his family and to his hometown. Um, so, and a little bit of background information on Brew McCoy and his ties to USC, all that sort of stuff. So his, his family has been very involved in the process along the way. Again, California being his home state, grew up a USC fan. Um, and USC does have a lot of young skill position talent that if JT Daniels does improve, Stephen Carr has a bounce back season. They do have a loading, loaded receiving core. Um, if all that comes together, they could actually be pretty good in a wide open Pac-12 South so outside of Utah. Um so, I mean, there, there are some ties there. His family was very heavily involved along the way for this whole eligibility ruling. Um, it, it, there was, I mean, there's reports that, like, it was getting delayed because he, uh, that, no. oh, hey, Johnny, what's up? Uh, there were reports along the way that he had his family lawyers looking over his situation with eligibility that um, really his family was deciding this whole process with him even though you know he moved halfway across the country. You can't fault the guy for wanting to be closer to his family, you know, playing for his hometown squad, or at least home state squad. Um, all this stuff is very, very respectable um, reasons to want to transfer. It's weird in the shortened timeline in like less than six months that all this is happening. But I mean, you only have a few years in college. Um, it, who knows what can happen through college football. It can be a brutal world. Play where you want to play. Um, I don't have any issues really with the whole situation. Like this is still a college. This is still a kid that hasn't even really started his college career in terms of official game action. Um, now, I, I think it's important to focus on the implications that stem beyond this. The first one being just like the bigger picture of the NCAA transfer portal. Um, does I mean McCoy? I guess technically has to put his name back in the transfer portal, or at least similar to that to be able to transfer back to USC has to get the release from the university of Texas, all that sort of stuff. Um, now if he goes back to USC, the confusing part here is for him and the Trojans, will he get eligible immediately or will he have to now guaranteed sit another year? There's two ways to look at this. I think the first one is like, how does all this translate for him? 
um, in, in the eyes of the NCAA. If they figure, oh, he's just going back to the place where he started, where he signed anyway, where he would have been immediately eligible, just basically all cancels out. Very realistic way to look at that. On the other end of the spectrum, you have, okay, this kid keeps going back and forth. We were reviewing him uh, going from USC to Texas in a span of less than a month. Uh, we were reviewing this, maybe pushing his eligibility through for one place, but now he's going back to the other for what seemed like uh, no tangible reason compared to the normal transfer uh, that you would see in the portal. So, I mean, and just basically not have a chance of getting immediately eligible. There's really two ways to look at that. In terms of the leanings of the NCAA thus far, I have no idea as of the latest reports, uh, what I've seen, what I've written about. Um, now, I think he has to officially transfer to USC to start getting clarity on that process. USC and Texas, and, and I guess in the bigger picture of if he does get immediately eligible here, USC does have a very talented receiving core, probably three or four at least future NFL players um, of various calibers. And um, adding Brew McCoy to that mix, um, it makes that receiving core much scarier. Um, on the Texas side, you do lose a guy that could come in and make an impact right away. You do lose a guy that could have filled the spot left by little Jordan Humphrey. And you also lose the guy that made your recruiting class the third best in the nation beyond teams like OU and Texas A&M. And now you probably slide back to like this it absolute best, the fifth or sixth best uh, 2019 class in the nation. Uh, Brew McCoy was the top signee. Um, he was one of the, I mean, he was the top early enrollee, all that sort of stuff, obviously. But um, you do still have a lot of depth in the receiving core. But you do have an additional scholarship that opens up. Do the Longhorns explore the transfer portal since you both lost old Jordan Humphrey early to the draft? You already, you now lose Brew McCoy and um, you already moved Jordan Whittington to wide receiver. I think that's a big question mark that comes up for the Longhorns. Um, they have plenty of depth coming back. I mean, it, it, realistically, you could just put like Jake Smith or um, what, John Bird, anything like that. There's so many players. John Bird was a random one to throw in there. But there are so many players. You have a lot of depth at the position. Um, you move Malcolm Epps from wide receiver to tight end, maybe start throwing him back, lining up on the outside a little bit more. Uh, there was talks at one point of him moving there anyway, but you also have, I think, the two obvious candidates here. Beyond Jake Smith would be Josh Moore and Brandon Eagles. Jordan Pouncey comes to mind. So, I mean, there's any number of names that come up for the receiving core, but there's also still a plethora of names in the transfer portal for that as well. So whatever way they want to look, they've already landed one guy out of the transfer portal, one immediate impact guy, too, with Parker Braun. You've already brought in two transfers from the JUCO level beyond national signing day and Willie Tyler and uh, Juwan Mitchell, nation's top JUCO inside linebacker for the 2019 cycle. Who knows? So um, it just the drama with the Longhorns continues. I think this is an interesting saga for Brew McCoy, the outside implications, two blue bloods, the first year of the transfer portal, um, a, a, a ton of immediate eligibility rulings with like uh, uh, names of my mind, Tate Martell, Justin Fields. Um, and both those guys got immediate eligibility, but their situation is in no way, shape or form similar to Brew McCoy. So a lot to dissect here, but it's a weird saga um, and it's not even close to being done yet. Um, nothing, nothing in regards to him transferring to Texas to USC is finalized. It's very much in the works, but we'll see. But anyway, I wanted to touch, touch base on that. I, don't know how many people are looking into this situation right now, but to me, it's one of the most fascinating like situations at this point of a very long and dead off season. So anyway, that's pretty much it. I'll have a few more videos that I'll be coming back with today, but wanted to uh, my thoughts on this. So anyway, that is pretty much it. See ya.